Hey guys and girls, Matt from soundrolling.com and uh, because I've been updating the app I've been obviously going back through uh, the kind of different resources that I've made and realised that I hadn't done a video on wireless blocks um, or frequency blocks and just wanted to kind of do a quick video explaining what that means and what that kind of jargon means and also some other things to look out for. Um, so firstly, what is a block of frequencies? Well, it's it's kind of as you imagine, like a Lego block, it covers a certain range of frequencies of the whole spectrum of, uh, of uh, radio waves and things like that. Um, eventually turning into light, funnily enough. Um, and they're usually based around TV channels. Now TV channels basically operate within that certain block, it gives them enough bandwidth uh, to obviously uh, broadcast without interference, that kind of thing. And so there, there's different allocations within these uh, kind of TV channels. Um, for different uses, astronomy, all this kind of stuff, um, and obviously radio microphones, and even just radio itself as well. So, that's number one. So that's what a block is. Now, there are different manufacturers of wireless. So we have, like, Electrosonics, we have Zaxcom, we have um, Wizicom, we have Audio LTD, we have, yeah, the list goes on. And so they all make different um, radio mic sets, um, because obviously they're operating in different countries and things like that. And within that, then they have different bands, otherwise known as blocks, um, of frequencies that their equipment is operating in. And these generally correlate um, to a number of blocks of TV channels. So hopefully you're following along so far. Now the confusing thing is that, number one, um, different manufacturers do different types of blocks. So there isn't a universal, like, block 21 or option N or band E, and they're all named different things. Um, so you've got to look out for that. Number two, um, often a receiver has a wider range that it can pick up than a transmitter. Um, and this, I, I think, is to do with kind of powering, that kind of thing. And so generally transmitters will have a smaller operating range within certain blocks than receivers. Now quite a few of these times, uh, the receiver and the transmitter are exactly the same in the options of things like the G3, um, and even some of the electrosonics. And so that's obviously, you've got to take that into consideration as well. And generally as well, oh, I kind of forgot my last point, but it can basically be very confusing. And so comparing uh, a kind of, when you're talking about a frequency that is good in a specific country, um, when someone talks about a block or a band or blah blah blah, you have to make sure what, what manufacturer they're referencing because then that will dictate a, an actual different amount of frequencies um, and sometimes will sometimes those frequencies will even overlap so um, for instance in the UK we have a lot of UK specific ones um, but there's for instance in electrosonics there's block 606 um, which covers a kind of narrow band and then because it starts at 606 megahertz and then we have essentially um, the top end of block 23 in the US and the bottom end of block 24 in the US that actually technically covers uh, block 606. Um, so obviously you need block 606 for the full range, but you could technically legally operate within um, block 606 by using the top of block 23 or the bottom of 24. Um, so yeah, so hopefully this video has like clarified a few things in terms of when you're dealing with wireless or you need to get um, a kind of handle on a block, you need to figure out uh, kind of uh, what manufacturer it is because that'll dictate the actual TV channels that are covered and that'll also dictate, um, yeah, just where, where that frequency range is in the spectrum as a total. Then you need to make sure that your transmitter and your receiver uh, cover a similar range, or if you're hiring out, for instance, that your uh, receiver will generally cover the transmitter, and at least the transmitter will cover the receiver, otherwise they won't talk to each other and that'll be useless. Um, then uh, that's that's probably it, that's probably the main ones, I don't want to get too complicated, um, but just, uh, yeah, hopefully that helps in terms of just demystifying a little bit when people talk about blocks, uh, because other names are bands, like Sennheiser, or options. Um, like in Wizicom, um, and uh, Zaxcom do blocks as well, so um, if you've got any questions let me know down below, but hopefully that's a nice intro to um, wireless blocks and when people talk about blocks and that jargon and kind of where it comes from and what to look out for. So until next time, see you later.